make sure make sure application is working with the IP address of EC2 instance okay after that create load balancer right and uh, target group after that access the application with ELB DNS this is what we are going to do it is this clear the steps guys is this clear everyone right yes one ELB is definitely enough we no need to have multiple ELBs and the same concept if you need to have multiple ELBs okay all right so <clears throat> let's go ahead and do that So let's launch our EC2 instances. So guys, tell me, I will put this EC2 instance, one EC2 instance in 1A, another EC2 instance in 1B, another EC2 instance in 1B. Okay. And also, and also, guys, this load balancer will, will be distributing the traffic to these two different EC2 instances, which is across availability zones. That is what I am just showing you. So I will launch one EC2 instance in 1A and put this index.html automatically and I will launch another EC2 instance in 1B with the user data. With the user data. Okay. Let's go and launch. So I will go with the Red Hat. T2 Micro. Default. I will put it in 1A. I will enable it. And here we need to put some user data script. Where is that user data script? Okay. Okay, let me explain this user data script first of all to you. Guys, now I'm I'll be talking a little bit about the Linux stuff. Okay? Okay, guys, this is the script that we are going to use throughout our course. What is this script doing? Be <coughs> okay, so the first line of the script, we call this as shebang. What is that? Shebang. So before going uh, um, shebang or shebang, whatever. So guys here, before I go a little bit deeper on this script, I just want to show, throw you a small little light on the Linux environment in my style. Okay. So everyone knows about the Linux? Basic commands, guys? Yes? Yeah. Definitely yes. So here, what we're going to do is, guys, what we're going to do is, so this Linux environment is completely, the Linux architecture file system is completely different than Windows. In Windows, we know everyone knows that we have C drive, we have uh, all the things that you know uh, where it's UI based, where we can click everything, we do it. But whereas in uh, in Linux, you will have the architecture like this. So here, this Linux, you have something called here hardware. On top of it, you have called kernel, right? And on top of it, you have something called shell. And on top of it, you have your application or your commands. So, so guys, what is kernel? Kernel is nothing but an operating system. The operating system 
which is the core component what is kernel kernel is the core component of your operating system all your programming code of your operating system how it work everything is based on your kernel okay so guys and after that you have shell and after that you have your command prompt can you can you guys can you list on few commands that you know on linux so the cat ls vi hmm mkdir move copy touch grab man something or ch mode hmm yum disk file system commands tail <coughs> head what not there are many 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 commands there are many many yeah, commands there are many command guys so all these commands will be on your so guys when you log into the linux environment you will get the black thing right black terminal so this is the black terminal on in the back end of your black terminal you will have something called shell on <clears throat> so basically whenever you give any command who will take it first who will take it first shell will take it first who will take it when you execute any commands so from here from here the shell will take it and shell will take it and it will send it to the kernel shell will take it and shell will send it to the kernel and kernel get some uh, uh, hardware resources from this and then and then it will give it to back the resources will be given to the kernel kernel will execute something and then the execution output will be given to the shell and shell will give back to your command prompt so this is what will be happening in your linux environment now the question here is guys what is shell shell is an interface between kernel and your application or command prompts so can you tell me without shell will your command will work without shell your commands will work no definitely no definitely no without shell the commands will not work so whenever you log into your uh, linux environment you would see this uh, you are you see this command prompt with dollar symbol and you will see the command prompt with hash symbol whenever you see the command prompt with the dollar symbol that is called normal user and when you see hash that is called root user you know the difference between normal user and root user or super user got that yeah so here guys there are when we talk about the shells there are different kinds of shells available in linux environment different kinds of shells so if you to list few in starting we have something called guys your linux environment will start with entire entire architecture entire file system will start with something called slash that is called root so inside that we have a sub directory is called slash etc you know very well tell me slash etc slash temp slash bin slash home slash slash home slash var what not there are so many sub directories like this yeah lib log dev lib, there are many so everything will start with root under that you have a sub directories like this so guys whenever you log into your windows machine you will have your own user profile na in your c drive there is in your c drive you have a users folder right inside the users folder you have your name you have your profile the same way whenever you log into your uh, whenever you log into your linux environment you will have your own home directory under home that mean let's say for example if if tom has logged in his home directory will be like this slash home slash tom if jerry has logged in it will be like this right so if what is the default user for uh, for uh, linux linux to log in ec2 minus user if someone is logging with the ec2 minus user this home directory will be slash home slash ec2 minus user so your home directory will be inside this home 
subdirectory. This is called home directory. Right? So for etc file, you have all your configuration files, temporary meaning all your temporary files will be there, bin meaning all your executables will be there, var meaning all your log files will be there. So for each and every uh, subfolder directly, it has its own things. Right? S bin, bin and all. So now when we talk about shell, you have a shell, initially there is a shell called, un, uh, under bin, the shell called bin slash a shell. This is called bond shell. What is this called? Bond shell. Later you have, they have invented something called K shell. Later they have invented something called T shell. They have something called con shell. Or finally, nowadays people are using something called this one. This is called born again shell. So, what's the difference between all these shell is? There are few, uh, few things are, uh, two things will work on first one and le later one will be so, the, is the enhanced one and C shell is more than enhanced between, uh, uh, with these two and finally the most popular and advanced and with all kind of properties and intelligence which is included is in bin bash what we call it as bin bash. So this bash shell, we call it as bash shell. What is this called as guys? Bash shell. What we call it as bash shell. And where is this bash shell is located? Under bin. So we call it as bin bash. So whenever in your script, whenever in your script, if you want to execute any commands in your script, without mentioning this bash, you can, without mentioning this shell details, you cannot execute the script. That's the reason why we have mentioned this here in the first in the script. So hash exclamatory is an interpreter here, slash bin slash bash. Bin bash is the shell that we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use. And that in the script, this line is called shebang. In the script, this line we call it as shebang. Okay? Hmm? So the next line is, if you want to install if you want to install anything in your Linux environment, what is the command that you use? Yum. So before talking about the yum, you should understand in Linux we have different, different flavors. Yes or no? In Linux we have different flavors. This is not my job, but I'm just giving you some extra information on Linux. So we have something called RPM based. RPM based. And you have another distribution called Debian based. You might have heard already in RPM we have Red Hat, RHEL or you have CentOS. All these kind of flavors will come under RPM based. And in Debian you have something called Ubuntu or you have something called SUSE. So there are friends, guys, there are many, many, many flavors. Linux is like ice cream. In ice cream you have multiple flavors, right? The same way Linux is universal. So they have multiple flavors with little bit of syntax difference and little bit of commands, uh, commands will change. So here, for example, here in RPM base in CentOS in Red Hat, to install any software or any package, you use a command called yum. Use a command called yum. But here, same thing, you will use something called apt-get. You use the, instead of yum, you use apt-get. Here, there's a package called web server package called HTTPT. Same way here in Ubuntu, you call it as Apache. So there will be a difference between the flavors and whichever you are using, you need to use those commands properly. Make sense? Getting it, guys? Yes. Got this? Yum. So now let's talk about here more. So this is yum. Yum install. What are you installing here? Guys, HTTPT is a lightweight web server. If you want to install some small applications, HTML application or small, small, small uh, thing. So HTTPT is a package that you are installing which holds your websites. Okay. 
So what is this doing? M install HTTPD minus Y. Minus Y meaning, guys, you are that is for interaction. When you are installing anything, it will ask, now, hey, whether you want to install this, yes or no. Yes. You, it is taking this much of memory, yes or no. Yes. So you are giving minus Y meaning install everything. So this line is for installing HTTPD. And once you install this HTTPD, you need to start the service, na? Right? You need to start the service, right? So service HTTP start. You are starting that service. That meaning starting HTTP HTTPD service. And this is check config. What is this check config? Yes. Whenever you reboot the EC2 instance or stop and start the EC2 instance, by default this HTTPD service will be in stop state. So just in case your website is up and running and someone has stopped the EC2 instance and started, your website will not come up again automatically until unless you log into the machine and you start this service. If you don't want this kind of things and you want uh, this service to be up and running whenever the machine is up, then you need to, this check config HTTPD on, you need to enable that. So this is for auto start. Auto start. HTTPD whenever you restart the machine. And how does this HTTPD uh, package identify where is your website? So for this HTTPD, there is a separate folder structure, separate place called var www slash html or var www slash html. In this directory, if you put any html file also, this HTTPD will consider that as a website. So that's the reason why we are creating this mkdir meaning make directory. That meaning creating directory, you are creating that directory. Most of the time when you install HTTPD, this HTTP service will itself will create the directory. You know not even mention this. But just in case, let's see. If it is already created, this command will not work. That's all simple. Okay, now, echo. So guys, these, we are doing this automatically. If you have any HTML file command, there is a command called echo. If, they, if there is no file, if you have mentioned the file at the end, index.html, if there is no file in this uh, directory, it will create a file, right? This meaning here, it will it will redirect all the data, whatever in your in your single quote, it will redirect, it will redirect, and it will print it. Echo meaning for printing, and this one is also used for create. But remember, if you use double, two double things, two double uh, greater than, it will happen. So, here, whatever you have put it here in echo command is redirecting to this index.html. If there is a page called index.html, it will just print this in this page. If there is no index.html, it will create and it will put all this data over, over here in this index.html page. And with this reason, index.html page site will be up and running in the easy code automatically. And this is the script that we are going to use it. Guys, is this clear, everyone? For now, it is script. I'm just showing an example. Script will not be fixed anytime, Ashish. It depend upon your requirement. It will be changed. Is this clear, everyone? A short thing on Linux. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is. So first we will launch two EC2 instance, okay now? We will launch two EC2 instance. And EC2. Guys, so using this user data concept, we will we will have this index.html page. Index.html page on both of them, okay? And the first EC2 instance, I call it as maybe server 1. And uh, second EC2 instance, I call it server 2. But guys, here, see here, now you tell me this index.html, this index.html should be same on both the EC2 instance, yes or no? Yes. But I just wanted to show you, I just wanted to show you the difference. That meaning this this load balancer will be sending the traffic to the to the 
distributing the traffic to the two EC2 instance, right? For that reason, for that reason, in this index.html file, hey, this is my first EC, uh, website on EC2, na? instead of that, I'll put it as server1, and here, I'll put it as server2, just to show you the difference. But in your real case, the both, both data, this line should be same for both EC2 instance. But, but I'll, when I launching the EC2 instance, I'll just put it as server1 for this and server2, so that whenever, from this ELB, whenever you access this website from ELB with the DNS name, you can, sometimes you'll get server1, sometimes you'll get server2. Based on this, I'll be showing you that it will distribute in traffic to the two EC2 instances. But in your real time, both should be same. And of course, you have a health checks here, okay? And you will have a target. Let's ready the tasks that you understood the task, what we're going to do. So, first and foremost, what we need to do, I already written, but I'm writing it here. Launch. Two EC2 instance with user data. Rich. And and we'll check if the website is working or not. Next step is we'll create load balancer. Next step is we'll create target group. Next thing is, so in this target group, what do we have? We, what we will register targets. Targets meaning here what, guys? Targets meaning our AC2 instance. We'll register that, we'll register the targets inside the target group. We'll register this target inside the target group. Once it is registered, then we'll access the ELB. Yes. Let's go ahead and do this based on steps, okay? Now, let's go and launch one EC2 instance. I'll go with the Linux Red Hat. Next, I'll put it in 1A. I'll enable it. And in user data here, I'll copy paste the script. Okay? Guys, and I'll just modify this here. It is uh, my first website on, EC, uh, on, uh, on server 1. I'll just put like this. Huh? to show you the distribution, okay? Okay, and next, next, I call this as server one. Next, next, review. And I'll do the same thing to the second EC2 instance. 1B, enable it, and I'll put it here. Instead of server 1, I'll put a server 2, just to show you the difference. Yes, sir. Server 2. Guys, <coughs> you understood what I did? So what protocol I need to enable on the security group in order to access my application? Yes. HTTP. Make sure in your security group, HTTP is allowed. HTTP, my And wait for the EC2 instances to come up.
Okay, the first one is done. So how do we check our website is working or not? On the first one, get the public, get the IP here and put it here and see. Do you see this guys? Hey, this is my first website on server one. So on server one, my website is working and let's wait for the server two. Get the IP, put it on. Great. So guys, on so our, our website is working on both EC2 instance. This is how you verify, guys. This is how you verify your website is working the EC2 instance or not. Tell me, guys, if it is not working on the EC2, will it work from the load balancer? No. That's the reason why. That's the reason why. First, make sure it is working on your EC2 instance first. I just checked from the web the IP address and put it on the browser. Make sure that you have a security group port uh, HTTP enabled and start works. So did we finish the first thing here? What's the next thing? So we need to go and create the load balancer. Let's go ahead and create. On the left side, you have load balancer. See? Let's go to the load balancer. I don't have any load balancers here. Let's create load balancer. <coughs> <coughs> so, do you remember that we have discussed about different types of load balancer, right? First one is ALB application, next one is network, next one is gateway load balancer which is recently came and classic load balancer which is previous generation, we don't talk about this and gateway is recently need if you need to third party virtual appliance that support in a way. Yeah, this is something to improve security and all. Yeah, this is a network load balancer. If you need to have a, a ultra high performance, then go for it. So here for all kind of your application, your normal choose would be your application load balancer. Just select, including your microservices and containers, okay? Click on create. Okay. Name, to a name. Call it as my ELB or just give any name. Just give any name. Okay, now you tell me guys, this load balancer, uh, this, yeah, but uh, Babji, classic load balancer is a previous generation, is a previous generation, no one will be using that, that will slowly will get rid of. Okay, so scheme, guys, scheme here, your load balancer should be internet pacing or internal pacing, your load internet. balancer. internal guys your load balancer your load balancer for internet it should be internet facing or it should be internal facing it should be internet facing guys the load balancer should be internet facing if it is if it is not internet facing will your users will be able to connect your load balancer no no so that's the reason why it should be internet facing Whenever you have a requirement, you can have multiple load balancer just like this. Remember, I talked about this. So here, you have load balancer for your web servers. Maybe you can have another load balancer for your application servers. Maybe another load balancer for something else. So the first one would be internet facing, and these are all internal facing because no one from outside cannot connect to this because it is internal. People will go from here or leave like. This. So IP address is IPv4, don't go with dual stack, that is for IPv6. Okay, now your load balancer should listen on what protocol? HTTP. Your load balancer should listen on HTTP, na? usually it should be HTTP or HTTPS. So here you go with HTTP or HTTPS, for now we are going for HTTP. Please tell me guys, do you remember? Uh, which service provides certificates, HTTPS certificates in AWS? Remember certificate manager? Yes. So in certificate manager, you go and you can have your own certificate, but we cannot do this now because you, you need to have a domain first. If you have a domain, you can create your own certificate like, like uh, at babji.com. First, you need to have a domain. On that domain, you can have your certificate like this here. Uh, certificate. You will get the certificate like this. Yeah. 
certificate information which is issued by AWS. This is for certificate manager only and this for one year will get it. From where? We just go to certificate manager. So in, I'm just showing because this will be helpful in your actual, uh, yeah. So here get started, you just request a, a certificate and then uh, you can use that certificate here. Don't create it because this will be bloody damn charge. Your private set, uh, CA will be charged heavily, uh, but you can have uh, this uh, normal, uh, this provision certificate for cheaper price also, but for that you need to have your own domain. Yes, you can add another listener, but remember, either you choose HTTP or HTTPS, it's up to uh, you, okay? So let's choose HTTP, which is port 80, okay? And guys, availability zones, your load balancer for HTTP is not charged, HTTPS will be charged, manage it. Guys, your load balancer should send the traffic to multiple EC2 instances, na, which is in different availability zones. So that meaning, I need to select here where, where in which EC2, in which availability zones that, that we did we launch our EC2 instance. We have our EC2 instance in one A and one B na. If you have, like one C also. Okay. Do you remember global accelerator that we have discussed in our initial classes? If at all you need global accelerator, just matter of selecting this. That's all. But don't do this because additional charges apply. But we have learned these are all add-on services for your load balancer. So if you use this global accelerator directly from internet, people will hit the load uh, hit the global accelerator first, and from there it will use AWS internal uh, uh, connection, which is super speed, and it will hit the load balancer. That's the reason why we have the global accelerator. But I'm not taking this now. Is this clear? Step one: configuring load balancer. Okay, click on next configure security settings. So as we are using HTTP, that's the reason why it is shouting that, hey, use HTTPS. But yes, in your actual environment, use HTTPS with your certificate. Let's click on next. Will you select, uh, will you create a new security group? Uh, or uh, will you create and uh, will you select existing security group? Ex select existing security group, yes. Here, and click on next. Guys, now it is now asking for target group. It is now asking for the target group. So here, target group, you can select a new, you can create a new target group, or you can select an existing target group, right? Tags, you just leave it. It's optional. You can write it whatever tags you want. So name. So guys, name. Target group. Select a new target group and I call it as, for example, web server target group. Something. You just give a name. Remember, for every load balancer, you need to have a target group. This is a target group. I'm just giving the name called target group. And you have instances inside the target group. And you are uh, it works on HTTP and HTTP with port 80. And version go with HTTP 1. This is all you can select it by default. Okay, and then here guys, health checks, health checks. Health check should be done on HTTP and what is the path here? Can you tell me guys, in our case, load balancer will be doing the health checks for your EC2 instance or for your application? The application. The application. So here, the path should be your load balancer should know your application is working or not. What is our application there? Index.html, no, no. So load balancer, you have to give here slash, right, slash index.html, you need to give here. Any page, any application, in your application, any page is required for the load balancer to just, to ping, that's all. You can give any page. Make sure that page should be available in your application. So at the moment we have index.html, right? And that's the reason why I put index.html. Keep this in mind, very important, people will do the mistakes here. People will remove slash. No, it should be slash index.html. 
slash index dot html any page any page any page so and health checks is that your load balance will be doing health check these are all like you know your advanced health check setting that meaning uh, how much healthy threshold that many number of consecutive health check success required before considering unhealthy target healthy so that meaning it will check five times hey are you there yes are you there yes are you there yes like this it will check five times and if it is if it is not responding it will check hey are you there no response are you there no response so this is two is unthreshold uh, unhealthy threshold and it is not responding and it will consider that target is that is it means it is unhealthy no you need to give the application here not domain so time out here is 5 seconds that meaning your application is not loading within 5 seconds right uh, yeah if your application is not uh, responding within 5 seconds it will load balance will consider as dead every 30 seconds it will check it and guys here success code you know very well it is 200 so basically you know need to change it in your real time so all you need to change the settings you can change those information Is this clear here? Step four. And next option is here. Next register targets. Click on next register target. So just now we have created the target group, but does it does, does it has any targets inside it? No. So so global access. I am not clear. you need to go back and see as 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 is global access is a big concept that we have already discussed please check our screenshot babji send him the screenshot that we took it last time so it is to for to give an answer uh, uh, that is used that is okay why should i give answer guys tell me why we need load uh, global accelerator uh, just to enhance like if we are in a different region Why we need global accelerator? Yes, it is for speed to increase the performance, to get the low latency, and if at all you need to have a static IP address. Yes, how many static IP addresses that is provide? Two static IP addresses. Yes, good one. So guys, here uh, register targets. So register target meaning we have two targets available here. So select these two targets. People will do the mistake here, guys. here yes so here people will do the mistakes here they just select it and they'll click on next no you need to select it and click on add to register if you click on add to register then only it is call it as register target right right got this so this is the important thing that you should give it here there is a question some website accessbank.com is there what we give in health segment accessbank.com is just a domain name in the back end they will have multiple files prasad so this is in the we are checking from the application level from the client perspective they don't care okay from application point of view they will have help, so many uh, uh, files you can give any path there from application point of view <coughs> yeah so do you understand step 5 here so select whatever the uh, whatever the ec2 instance that you want to uh, register select this and add to register here this is clear step 5 and click on next review to it and then boom so it is now provisioning let's wait and see so this should become active this should become active and guys here if you see here this is my load balancer do you see under description do you see this dns name right this is the dns name that we should be use we, we should use to access our application guys is it uh, is it recommended to use the dns or is it recommended to use to give this dns name to the customer no what is the concept that you should how do you do the makeup Route 53. So this is a nasty URL. I just put the own name, so don't use it. 
So this is a nasty URL which is no customer is interested to uh, access it. So you just, in Route 53 we have a separate ports or separate class for Route 53 where, uh, where we will do this again and then try to put this Route 53, to put these aliases and all. Okay. For now we will access with this nasty URL. So it is provisioning, so it's listeners, we are using these listeners here and uh, monitoring integrated services, global accelerators and all we don't want. And do you see this here, target groups? If you go to the target groups, we have created a target group called web server target group. And here at the bottom, do you see the targets? <coughs> do you see the targets? So we have two targets called server1 and server2 and which shows as healthy. So this you should get like this. What is provisioning meaning starting state elevator? Provisioning meaning working, doing, in progress. Okay. So guys, do you see the status? Status should be healthy, then only your load balancer work. Otherwise, if it is unhealthy or failed or something, that meaning please check your user data. Your user data is the problem. By the way, I am just sharing this user data also to you so that you can also use that. <coughs> so please be care very careful with the single quotes, lines and all. So yeah, copy that. So guys, my status, uh, my target status are healthy. So that meaning I'll go back to the load balancer. I take my nasty URL and then I'll just put it over in the group. You see this guys? My load balancer is now working with the backend. So now I, now the request is going to the server one. I'll just refresh. Server two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Do you see this? This is called distribution, load balancing. This is called load balancing. Got that? And that's the reason why I put it in the user data called server one and server two, just to show you the load balancing. Or in our in your actual real time environment, this will not be same. Do you do you like if someone access, you will get server one. If someone access server two, is that good in your real time? No. This should be same. But I just wanted to show you the difference. That's the reason why I put server one and server two. Then. Got that? <coughs> Clear on load balancer. Any questions? So please check the target groups are healthy or not. So the most common, the most common uh, issues that you might get is, you might get is, guys. One thing is security groups. You have not enabled HTTP, HTTP port number. Or another one is in security group, you might have removed this all traffic. It's not, I'm telling you, don't touch this all traffic. Let it be. That is another problem. And the third thing would be your user data might have not, might have not launched properly. So that meaning, please check with the first public IP address, whether it is working or not, then only go with the ELB. Can we see this one in system log? No, definitely no. System log. It just only used to set up only the machine, that's all. You cannot see all these things there. Okay. So I have given the clear details and uh, um, yeah. So as I have an interesting task also for you. Hey, by the way, guys. I forgot to ask you. Uh, is there any way to monitor our hits from console which is hitting ELB? Uh, from the console, you cannot. No. No. You have monitoring here. How many requests you might are getting, you will get it. How many, like 500 errors or 404 errors, or uh, you you will you can monitor only this. How many connections? How many active count and all? But to where? Which machine it is going in the back end? No. No. Guys, yesterday did you try with the Linux environment? 
Volumes and all? No. Good. I Excellent. don't have putti. Nice. Those who have not done, please do it. So, guys. So here, in listeners, in the load balancer, in the listeners, you have something called. We have created a target. You, how many target groups that we have created? Only one. Can we create multiple target groups? Yes. So you can create multiple uh, target groups. and then here you edit it not this <coughs> edit group so guys here see by default did we talk about uh, post post base routing and path base routing remember simply simply guys here in our website we have slash index.html na so you can have another two ec2 instance called server3 and server4 there you put just only slash admin no dot html same step same thing slash admin and then you create another target group and then you can add a rule again insert rule and then add condition path if someone is coming with slash admin and then you just forward or forward it to which target group you might have created another target group you just select this and then boom so with this guys if someone is coming with slash at me it will go to that target group and if not if otherwise it will go to the your index.html so like this you can create multiple target groups and multiple uh, you can set the rules this is called path based routing give a try so give a try i clearly wrote how to do this here please check so the seventh step is this explore path based routing create four ec2 instances guys two with slash index and uh, uh, slash index target group 1 and two with slash admin target group 2 and add the rules in target group so try to do this this will be very interesting and you will have also weekend get that let's take this so how to go how to reach here so here in load balancer in listeners you have view edit rules you need to click this Is will able to do this practical? Please show one server run, server two in four color. Okay, here this one. Abdul. Access that nasty URL, you will get this. Please go back. Abdul, put it to everyone. everyone should see your chat please go back one step that meaning where please go back one step what you need to do see exactly tell me that when i click refresh it will load both sir when both server uh, when you click refresh it will hit one server only at the time both cannot be how can it be so it will distribute one by one from here you are going to portal guys can you help me what abdul is talking about so uh, here in description i copied this dns name this one and i paste it and that's where i get this portal this one ओके अच्छा अच्छा आशीष गाइस दिस एवरीवन अंडरस्टूड व्हाई वी आर गेटिंग सर्वर 1 एंड सर्वर 2 
please Ashish. Because that question that will trigger my mind again that you guys have not understood. Please and understand. And guys, because I'll just show you here, you see user data here. In user data, for server 1, I'll put it as server 1. For server 2, on the user data, I put it as server 2. That's the reason why we are getting. But in your actual, it should be only server. It should be both. I explained that already. Yeah. <coughs> The same process, uh, same process happens billion, big billion days. Yes, yep, same thing. Yeah, please explain slash admin. Yes, so in, in simple thing, here in user data for server 3 and server 4, instead of here slash index.html, you just put slash admin, that's all, no HTML. And put it as, hey, this is from server 4 and slash admin that's all and then what you do in the load balancer listeners uh, in the target group you create a separate target group another target group and call it as slash admin right and then uh, here in listeners in listeners you create a here plus symbol insert rule and then add condition path based routing and here you put slash admin and here forward to which you have created just now for server 3 and server 4, you have separate, separate target group now, you select that target group and then click on save. That should work. Try it out. Creating instances. Okay. Please show me where you have used that script. Script in user data. In, in step 3, we have user data now. In step 3, you have user data. This one here, user data here. Yes. <clears throat> so many people might have, <laughs> they have closed this as one details, expand this advanced details, then you'll see this user data there. Good. So once you have done all these things, make sure that you terminate the, so guys, if I, if I see, if I terminate the server one, Will my website will get affected? No, it will not because we have the server 2 also there, right? We have the server 2. So all the requests will be sending to the server 2 because if you see that uh, shutting down, that meaning if the load balancer will consider this as unhealthy, see, in targets, it has removed completely. So it has, we have shut down. So if you have stopped it, if you have stopped it, it says unhealthy. Okay, now let me show access it. It's 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 up, but it is going to only server two because we have server two still running. And if you terminate it also, then that is the problem. So how to guys? If you terminate these two like this then what is the concept that we should implement in order not to happen like this? Yes, auto-scaling. So we need to implement auto-scaling. So if once someone accidentally went and then terminated all the EC2 instance, the auto-scaling group will not keep quiet. It will go and launch the minimum number of EC2 instances so that your website will be up and running. And no stupid will go and do terminate all the EC2 instances in your, in your enterprise, in your company. So that's a very, very, very rare case and he will be out of the job. And, uh, and, and uh, so on top of it, so in our next class, in our EC2, we have only this auto scaling pending, right? We have only this auto scaling pending. In our next class, we'll see this auto scaling concept. So our next class would be on Monday. So Monday we'll finish this auto scaling, right? No, auto scaling again, it's a big topic. Uh, let's not take it today. We will not be able to complete it in half an hour or 20 minutes. No. So let's have a separate, let's not hurry. Let's have a separate uh, thing. Yeah. So one real time question, IRCTC got out in always hang in that call. What is the technical issue, sir? Yes, what is the technical issue? Can someone relate this? Yes. So let's say the okay guys, don't you take take this screenshot? 
मुद्दा रखो गाइस इन योर आईआरसीटी सी फॉर एग्जांपल इन द बैक एंड गाइस इन द बैक एंड देयर विल बी डेफिनेटली ऑटो स्केल एंड हाउ मेनी थप 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 लॉन्च ईसी टू इंस्टेंसेस दैट मीट हैव लॉन्च 50 60 ही आल्सो नीड टू चेक इट ना even if it is 50 60 each ec2 instance might have 8 gb ram definitely if you have a, a, a crores of it that 8 gb ram and 50 machines might also not get the not sufficient that's the reason why it is slow that's the reason why it will hang that's the reason why i don't know whether irctc will be use, is using what technology they might be on main i heard that it is on main frames i heard that on main frames So main frames concepts are completely different. I also heard to reboot the IRCT server will take days to get reboot the entire entire system. But if you want to relate it for that call time, auto scaling might happen. can we do this uh, schedule scaling only from uh, what is the tarkal time from morning 8 to 10 or something so can we have a schedule scaling on 8 to 10 possible did we learn that already yeah yes we are using dns name here to access target group if, if in case there are two target groups how can we get the specific target group in your in your here you should give slash admin here in your you are that's all any other questions so i'm just going and terminate it so i delete my load balancer and i delete my target group also and i'll go back here and see all are zero except key parents Sir, please go a bit slow while doing press. Uh, what in my entire teaching experience, no one said that I'm going fast. Guys, am I going fast? It's man dead slow and it's spoon feeding. No one will teach you like this. I bet on that. step by step step by step i am asking you step 1 is that clear step 2 is that clear step 3 is that clear i am giving plenty amount of time yeah great so guys uh, can you give me the final cc for today on this cc topic load balancer Okay so guys that is all for today and I'll see you on Monday with the next topic until then take care bye bye have a nice weekend and stay safe see you on Monday